How's it going, everybody? This brief video tutorial is going to go over connecting Maestro DMX to a router. We definitely suggest using this method if you're trying to control Maestro DMX wirelessly using a phone or tablet or laptop, and you don't want to direct wire to Maestro DMX to that device. Definitely suggest using a router for that purpose. Maestro DMX does have Wi-Fi through that Wi-Fi dongle, but that dongle is an older model dongle. It has limited features for wireless connectivity. It also only supports older legacy security modes. And that dongle, small, tiny, doesn't have a really big antenna in it. So you're not going to have good stable connection using this dongle, especially if you're connecting from far away or if there's other wireless networks in the vicinity that are stronger signals than this dongle because you'll have connectivity issues with that as well. So in this method, we're going to have a Maestro DMX and we have our portable router here. With this example, I am using the GL iNet line of portable routers. This is their MT3000 model. This is a Wi-Fi 6 router, a little more expensive. They do make a AC router that is a lot cheaper, $35 US versus this model, which is around $85 US. But in this example, I'm going to use this router and my Maestro DMX. You're going to need your Maestro, you're going to need your router, you're going to need an Ethernet cable to connect the router into Maestro through the Ethernet port. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to the Maestro Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go over to our PC here, and we're going to connect that into Maestro DMX. So our first step is going to be connecting to that Maestro Wi-Fi network. And again, as mentioned, we are using this uh, GLINet MT3000 line. This one's a little bit pricier. Like I said, around $86 US on Amazon. They do have that SFT1200, which is a lot cheaper, $35 US. And it gives you two Ethernet ports. So if you have additional wired devices that you want to connect to the router, you can also use this for other devices as well. But in this example, we are using that Wi-Fi 6 model. Um, so our first step is going to be connecting to the Maestro Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go to our Wi-Fi on our device. We're going to find the Maestro network and we're going to connect to it. Now I'm going to use the default password for this. It is my Maestro. If you've changed your Wi-Fi password, obviously use whatever Wi-Fi password you set it to on your Maestro DMX device. But if it's your first time connecting, my Maestro will be your default password. We're going to click Next here. Now Windows will take a moment to connect because it is checking the network to see if it has internet connectivity. You're also probably going to see a pop-up that says the wireless network is insecure. That is normal. It's, again, because it's using that older Wi-Fi security method, you're going to get those types of warnings on newer devices when connecting to it. You can safely ignore those, ignore those warnings. There's that warning just popped up. It says the network isn't secure. That's fine. Feel free to just ignore it. Let it continue to connect. Now we are connected to the Maestro Wi-Fi network. So we're going to pull up our web browser. We're going to go to maestro.local on our device. That's going to pull up our Maestro DMX page. Now, this Maestro here is running the latest firmware build as of the recording of this video, which is 1.4.1. Um, I definitely suggest making sure you're running at least on that build before following along, because some of the menu options in Maestro have changed with this build. Um, so definitely suggest making sure you're up to date before following along in this video. But once you're connected to Maestro and on the Maestro page, we're going to click on system at the top and we're going to go to networking. That's going to take us to our networking page. There's going to be a Wi-Fi option and a LAN option. The Wi-Fi option is making changes to the built-in Wi-Fi on that Maestro DMX. The LAN option is for adjusting the Ethernet port. And we're going to make our changes within the LAN tab here. So by default, when you first get your Maestro DMX, it's going to be set to a static IP, which is going to be 10.0.0.200. We want to switch that over to DHCP because we're going to have our router give an IP address to Maestro. So once you're on the LAN page, under IP mode, you're going to click the drop down and change that option from static IP to DHCP. Once you've done that, you're going to click on Update Network Interfaces at the bottom. That's going to bring up a pop-up window at confirming that you want to make those changes. Just click Yes, and then you'll get a green box at the bottom once the changes have been applied. That confirms that you've switched it over to DHCP. Now we're going to go back over to our router and our Maestro DMX, and we're going to connect Maestro into our router using that Ethernet cable. So again, we'll go back over to our router. We have our Maestro DMX here. 
Make sure, obviously, your Maestro DMX is on, your blue light is on, it's powered. We're going to take that Ethernet cable, we're going to connect it into the Ethernet port of Maestro DMX. And the other end, we're going to connect to a LAN port on our router. Now, a lot of routers are going to have multiple Ethernet ports. This port here is labeled as WAN, that's for Internet access. This port here is our LAN port. So make sure you do connect it to one of the LAN ports. We're going to plug that Ethernet in there. And then what you can do to confirm that your cable is good, check on Maestro. There are LEDs right above the LAN port. There'll be an orange LED showing the connection is made, and there'll be a green LED that'll be flashing, which is showing that data and packets are flowing across that network. So just again, make sure those LEDs light up. That confirms that your network cable is good and your router connection is good. Once you've connected that cable, you can go back over to your PC. And this time we're going to connect that PC into our router. Wi-Fi network. So we will pull up our router Wi-Fi here. There we go. And we're going to connect to that router Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go back to Wi-Fi on our device. We're going to find our router, which mine is called Jody J Repeater. If you just bought your router, it's likely going to have a default address that you connect to. Refer to your router manual for that information. Should give you the Wi-Fi SSID and the password. But we're going to connect to that network. So I'm going to choose my repeater network and click on connect. It's going to ask me for my password. I'm going to enter that in. And then click next. And again, this will take a moment to connect. Again, because our laptop is checking our network to see if there's internet access on that router. So it'll take a moment to connect. Once it's connected successfully and you see that icon, it'll say no internet if your router isn't connected to internet. But just confirm you have connectivity there. And now we're going to go to our router's configuration page. Now this will be different based on the router that you're using. If you're using a GL iNet series, one of the ones that I suggested in earlier in the video, that default IP address is going to be 192.168.8.1. If you're using a different router, again, refer to your router documentation for that default IP address. That's going to pull up a login page for our router. We're going to enter that password for our login page. And then that will bring up our router interface. Once you're in the router interface, you're going to need to go to a page that shows connected clients. So on the GLINet series, that's going to be the clients tab. If you're using a, another router from a different manufacturer, Refer to the router documentation for where to go to see connected clients. Click on that Clients tab, and that's going to show the devices that are connected to our router. At the top here, we see our laptop that we're currently on is connected over Wi-Fi. And we see there's a client called Maestro, which is connected over Ethernet. And this little icon here, that's our Ethernet icon. It's got two little arrows and some dotted lines between them. That shows a wired connection. And that's going to list an IP address. This is the IP address that was assigned to Maestro from your router. So if you show Maestro connected as a client and you see an IP address listed there next to it, that means Maestro has now been successfully connected to your router and you should be able to browse to the Maestro page through that router. So I am connected to the router. I have the IP address here. I could enter that in my tab or I could just use maestro.local instead. So we're going to do maestro.local. That should bring up the Maestro page here in a moment. Now, again, if you're connected through that router, your device may be doing uh, DNS queries, so we'll give it a second. Um, if that page doesn't come up the first try, and there it goes, it came up. But if it doesn't come up, you can always use that IP address instead of maestro.local. But most of the time, maestro.local should work through your router. But again, if not, use that IP address that was assigned to it from your router. And we can confirm that maestro has that IP assigned by going again to system, networking, and now we'll see under DHCP, there's that IP that was assigned from our router listed right there under DHCP. It's got the right subnet mask and the gateway is our router's IP address. As long as you see those entries in there, that IP was, was assigned successfully to Maestro. And again, if you want to, if you don't want to use maestro.local, you can always use that IP address instead to connect to your Maestro unit. But again, this was a simple guide for connecting Maestro to a router. Hopefully this was helpful for those of you that are looking for this type of a setup. Again, if any questions do come up, don't hesitate to reach out to us through our support page. There is a form directly on that page where you can submit a ticket, or you can email us directly at support at maestrodmx.com. Thank you.